What's it like being in London? Like, what does this city mean to you? I know you got a history with this country. Yeah, absolutely. I, I did my graduate work at Oxford and we would come down to London on rare occasion when we could pull away from the equations and have a good time. So I feel a definite connection between my upbringing as a physicist and this city. Okay, gotcha. And the time at Oxford, two years, was it very different than Harvard and different than Columbia? Yeah, it was, it was quite different, especially because when you start at Oxford, even as a graduate student, you're thrown in right with the first years, the freshmen, so it felt like starting over again after I'd already done that through undergraduate in the United States. But in the end, it was a great time, made a lot of great friends, and I learned a lot of physics. Wow, yeah, oh, and it must be a different way they look at physics with all the history there, or that's, not? That's an interesting question. In the end of the day, most physicists around the world kind of look at physics from 30,000 feet in roughly the same way. But you're right, you're in the very place where the subject originated, so there's a sense of heritage and grandeur that you don't really get anywhere else. Hmm. Wow. Well, you know, I studied mechanical engineering down the road from where you were at Harvard. Um, and I was joking earlier, if I knew that, you know, there would have been all this attention on physics, I would have, I would have done that. Do you think there's students today down at MIT or these other places that are thinking, I'm gonna study physics and do what Brian Greene's doing, <laughs> become yeah. famous. Well, because back when I did it, nobody was doing media around physics, yeah. really, except for Carl well, Sagan. Well, Carl Sagan was doing you know, for astronomy and astrophysics. Yeah. But um, look, you know, I think as you well know, these subjects are hard, and the only way you can get through them is if you have a passion for the material. In fact, I tell students when they come to me and they're, they're struggling between physics and another subject, I often tell them, if you can do another subject, you may want to do that because to succeed in physics requires, you know, I was working 14, 15 hours a day when I was a graduate student at Oxford. It's the only way to really make headway and to make a difference. Yeah, it's really hard. And I was, I was having flashbacks to my days at MIT when I chose mechanical engineering. And I lived in a fraternity house with 50 dudes. And some chose computer science and mm -hmm. double E and some chose civil engineering, some chose uh, mechanical engineering. And I remember there were a few physicist guys and they, they were so hardcore, man, yeah. they loved it. They wanted to get in there and with the quarks and the neutrons and mess around and they yeah. went on to get PhDs and work at universities. Whereas for me, I used to work on my car when I was in high school. And for me, I needed, I needed to see something yeah. move. I needed to build something. So I agree, I mean, you really have to love it. Yeah, right? but it's funny though, I was quite different from you growing up I was not the kind of kid who went for the chemistry set or build things. I was totally a math kid. And when I got to uh, college, I did everything that I could to avoid any kind of course where you had to touch anything whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I somehow wiggled my way through the requirements. I never took a laboratory course. And I regret it to this day because that tangible quality of physics when you're actually looking at the world with your math, but then touching the world and examining the world, I think that's a vital part of the education, and I kind of missed out on that. Do you also think, though, that when you're touching it like that and like smelling it and seeing it, that like, I think you kind of touch on this in this book as well, that it removes you from these bigger principles? Like you said, we kind of grew up as cavemen understanding yeah. Newtonian physics, not quantum. It, it does, but my, my view is that you need both. You know, you, you need to look at the world in a variety of different ways, right? So the physicist looks at it in terms of the ingredients and the laws, you know, the chemist puts those together into atoms and molecules and the biologist then cells and life and so on. And the act of engaging with the world through building that car engine or doing the laboratory course is another way of touching and engaging and being part of the reality. And I think you need it all. So at times you do need to be pulled away from the big ideas because ultimately the work is right down here in the gutter, in the dirt. That's where you make the progress. Right, it's right in front of you. Yeah.